It was 1984 when the Ghostbusters first took the call to save New York City from Paranormal Barrel. As these mystic forces resurface to wreak havoc 37 years later in Ghostbusters, Afterlife, now in theaters, the most famous poltergeist battlers ever take the next call to duty. Ray Stans, Dan Aykroyd, 69, Dr. Peter Venkman, Bill Murray, 71, and Winston Zedmore, Ernie Hudson, 75, strap on proton packs once again in the name of deceased fourth member Egon Spengler, Harold Ramis, who died at 69 in 2014. With fleeting cameo appearances in 2016's Ghostbusters, Answer the Call the senior crew takes center stage in the new film, joining forces a younger generation led by granddaughter Buster Phoebe Spengler, McKenna Grace. It never felt like I took off the jumpsuit or the proton pack, says Aykroyd. We were recalled into service. And we stepped up. USA Today talked to Aykroyd about crossing into the afterlife. Making Ghostbusters slacker Gary Gruberson somehow sexy. Dan Aykroyd, Ernie and Billy are probably the same size suit. I think mine was taken out at the waist, but movie cameras make you look good. The equipment felt good and I didn't have to put another hole in the belt. Aykroyd, Billy is very discriminating and has a high BS detector. Has not going to do something that's false in any way. Having his imprimatur made this whole thing valid. If he hadn't done it, it would have been a massive hole. But he saw the merits, the joy and the possibilities here. You should never cross the streams. You're dealing with a million electron volts per thrower. That's no good. In this case, it didn't work. We were shocked. But the climax was against a demonic entity from another dimension with intense power. Without giving anything away, the way it went down on set, there was a lot of flashing lights and smoke. As actors we believed, in those moments, because of the power of the set, We did add some features to the Activision video game. I always wanted a Taliban-style turret at the top with proton packs under the seat. But they did well with that gunner seat. And the scene flying through the cornfield, that was exhilarating. Aykroyd, as the original co-writer, with Ramus, and creator of the characters, I have proprietary rights. They can't make a movie without me granting theatrical rights. I would grant that, and if Terry's a part for me, I would certainly play it again. But I don't know what the status is for any further films. Aykroyd, it'd like to die. I think Bill and I should be killed in the next one. Or, maybe we wait. Why not use the living Ghostbusters, Ernie? Billy and myself, for 4, 5, and 6. Go until we're gone. Then there will be time for the tributes. Death is going to take us soon enough. Aykroyd, absolutely. She works hard for her money, she's matured and she's going to be fine. But if she wants some help and advice, it'll supply it gratis. Tell her to call me, it'll double her fortunes in five years. It'd put her in Amazon, Tesla and Netflix stocks and just walk away, watch the money grow. Aykroyd, first of all, James Austin Johnson, the new SNL cast member, is a tremendous impressionist. 
He does a great Trump and a great Biden. But when Trump was being impeached, in January, Lorne and I were discussing me coming back as Nixon to wake up Trump in a nightmare. But then so many other political things happened that just overtook it. Ackroyd, Jason was friend of the Ghostbusters, and of Harold. He lost a friend and an avuncular figure when, Ramus, died. There had been no Ghostbusters without Harold, his writing and intelligence, the cerebral yet accessible tone of dialogue. He wasn't a believer in ghosts or the paranormal supernatural, necessarily. But he knew all of the science that was being explored. That ending tribute was perfection, respectful and affectionate. Austin doesn't feel good in Ghostbusters, Afterlife, a frustrating franchise we dread.